Hey everybody, what's up? You know, I saw a question on Sonic Stadium, and I know some people have tried to explain it already. But I'll th I thought I'd kind of explain it here for a lot of the uh, people here at the YT. You know, that might be new to the comics of Sonic the Hedgehog by Archie. And basically, <laughs> I'm wondering uh, the same thing. basically wondering the same thing. You know, this one fan uh, was asking the question of at the Sonic Stadium. Uh, what exactly is Sonic Universe? People want to know what exactly is Sonic... This individual wants to know what is Sonic Universe. So for anybody that might be wondering that same question, You know, might be wondering that same question. As a longtime fan of the comic and reader, sometimes, well, I try to be at times reader of the universe spinoff. Let me explain what is Sonic Universe for a lot of you people out there. Again, well, not for a lot of you people, but basically for you guys that might be new to the comics and just like this person at with Sonic Stadium want to know exactly what Universe is about. You see, Sonic Universe began, essentially, well, it began well over 50 months ago. Uh, by now, you're looking at basically about, and recently, it started about 53, 53 months ago. So essentially about four years ago, a little over four years ago. So about a little over four years ago is when it started. Now, when it first began, Sonic Universe was originally brought in, not just as a new comic book series, but as a replacement for the Sonic X comic book series. That's right, Sonic X, for some of you that don't know, the anime which ran from 2003 to about 2007 and continuously gets rerun uh, nowadays on Saturday mornings on the Vortex uh, block of CW. Sonic X, um, even after it was said and done, I believe, or well, while it was getting said and done, if you will, Sonic X was... Well, well, Sonic X basically, the Sonic X comic book basically, I'm trying to think here, so I'm sorry if there's a few pauses here and there, but the Sonic X comic basically was an interlocking of stories that took place in between the second season. That's right. These are stories that took place in between the episodes you saw of the second season. They didn't take place in between the second and third, or the first and the third. These are episodes that, according to what I understand, took place between the second season itself. Well, they was basically, well, the characters were still on Chris's world. This is how, this is when these stories took place. And the way it was introduced, the way Sonic Universe was introduced, was through, believe it or not, a Shadow the Hitchhawk arc. That's right, Shadow the Hitchhawk. Basically, it began, I think, in part two of something like that, of an all hedgehogs war. Basically, it was in, basically about, I don't know if, no, I, well, no, well, not part two, but more so part one of an all hedgehogs war. And this was also part of the final two parts of the Mobius invasion storyline. The, the, the Suppression Squad Invasion Storyline, if you know what I mean. The Suppression Squad's Invasion Storyline. Where they, for quite a few issues, for quite a number of issues, um, had, uh, basically hostilely 
took over Freedom HQ. Basically, they basically the suppression squad had a hostile takeover of Freedom HQ. So anyway, in the first in the first to last part of this story arc, Shadow is battling out with Metal Sonic. And what happens is because Metal Sonic had not Metal Sonic, but because Shadow has that chaos control, he could teleport from one area to another. Hold on for a second. Trash cans come trash Trash trucks come by. But like I said, but like I said, because Shadow can do that chaos control teleportation, basically what happened is Shadow chaos controlled himself and Metal Sonic, or one of the versions of Metal Sonic, if you will, out of out of Scourge's Mobius, out of the Mobius, basically the anti-Mobius, and teleported himself and Metal Sonic, if you will, into the Sonic X world. That's right, it teleported them right into the Sonic X world. And since this was Shadow Prime, if you will, he had no idea about his X counterpart. He had no idea of what his Sonic X counterpart had done, or who he was, or what was going on. So, basically after that, basically after that, um, Shadow again teleports himself and Metal Sonic into Blaze's world. That's right. Just like he did. Just like he did at in in the first to last part of the Suppression Squad invasion storyline. Just like he did there. Just like he did there. Hold on for a second. Here goes the bird. Recycling truck or the trash truck, it's the bird. But anyway, like I said, just like he did towards the end of the first, second part of the Suppression Squad's uh, invasion story arc, he did the same thing at the end of the final, at the end of the 40th and final issue of Sonic X. That's right, issue 40 of Sonic X was the final one. And that essentially led into Sonic Universe, the very first issue, and into Blaze's world. So yeah, that's how Sonic Universe started. It started because of a Shadow story arc, and his story arc continued on for four more, from the first issue to the fourth issue, from issue one to four of Sonic Universe. And that's basically what Sonic Universe had always been. It had always been a story arc. I mean, it had always been basically a spin-off comic that contained story arcs that took place with, mostly within the same continuity and timeline as the main comic did. Now, there were times that, now there were certain times where there were exceptions about that. And those certain times where there was exceptions was Mobius years later. Which was Mobius 30 years later. That was basically one of the exceptions. And the other exception was Silver's story arc, where he went into what's known as Dark Mobius, 
or as some fans dubbed it, the Archie version of Other M, and met the Dark Freedom Fighters there, or the Dark Mobius' Freedom Fighters, led by Dark Mobius version Jenna Cobb. Get what I'm saying? Jenna Cobb, of course, being the Dark Mobius version, I should say, of Lala Sue, Knuckles and Julie Sue's daughter. But anyway, but anyway, as I'm trying to say, with those few exceptions there, here and there, and mostly with an exception, possibly, of uh, the Sonic Underground story arc coming, most of the time, the story arcs that take place in-universe, oh yeah, and then of course you have sometimes your one-shot issues, like let's say, um, the Metal Sonic vs. Shard issue, and then of course you have the, uh, the one-shot Elseworld issue, uh, which was basically an advertisement, if you will, for Sonic All-Star Racing. All-Star is Racing Transformed, I should say. That's what it was. Basically, an, basically a, an issue, basically an advertising issue for that. But with those exceptions, with the exceptions of the Metal Sonic vs. Shard issue 50, All Stars Racing Transform adaption, one issue adaption, the um, Mobius years later story arc, and the Dark Mobius story arc, everything else, with those few exceptions, all took place. And of course, with the possibility of the Sonic Underground story arc, everything else took place within the same continuity and the same timeline uh, as the main comic, except they were taking place elsewhere. That's why, that's basically what Sonic Universe was. And sometimes, just like right now, when worlds collide, sometimes the issues would, in, would interlock with what's going on in the comic. Basically be a, be a side situation. For example, we had the Iron Dominion story arc, which was till recently, till just recently, was now basically, which is basically now the second longest story arc, or third longest story arc, depending on how you look at Worlds Collide, the second to third longest story arc that Ian Flynn had ever done, and Sonic Universe had a story arc that interlined with the Iron Dominion arc called Journey to the East. And this story arc took place, I believe, around after, was supposedly taking place a little after uh, issue 209, I believe, or something like that. And the featured characters were Sonic, Sally, Tails, Monkey Kong. And that was about it. And the main purpose of this four-part side plot of this side arc uh, to Iron Dominion was for them to disband uh, the houses, the uh, br the uh, um, the bride's houses, those that were loyal to the Iron Queen, if you know what I mean. So that sometimes will happen with Sonic Universe. They will have a story arc for issues that will interlock, if not have a direct connection to the main story that's going on in the main comic. Now sometimes, because of this, the main comic will get ahead of Universe, or Universe will get ahead of the main comic. And that sometimes throws fans off. The Iron Dominion Journey to the East situation is a good example of that. Now, with, the, with something like Worlds Collide currently, sometimes it will be used as just being the next chapter or the next part in the story arc. Like, you know, for example, uh, 51 was part 2 and 52 was part 5. So basically the just like continuations from one, from another comic book issue to the next. Like, Part 8 just came out in Sonic Universe 53, so Part 9 will be continued on in the main comic, which I should be getting in the mail very soon. But the point is, like I said, the point is, like I said, a universe for a majority of the time is just used 
like I said, with those exceptions, like I said, with the Dark Mobius, Mobius years later, the R Star's Transformers one off, uh, the possible underground story arc, and the one issue with Metal Sonic and all that. Metal Sonic was a shark. Everything else, the majority of everything else, is, a, is, is its own four issue story arc that takes place within the same timeline and continuity as the main story arc and does get referenced. So, it does get a reference and vice versa. So that's basically for anybody that's curious about Sonic Universe and are new to the comics and want to know what it's about, that's basically what Sonic Universe is. And like I said, there are a few exceptions, like I mentioned. There have been a few exceptions and there will be a few exceptions in the future, no doubt about that. But mainly its purpose for the majority of the time, for let's say about 75% of the time, has been to you know, showcase story arcs featuring other characters, not just Sonic, because they will show Sonic at times, but not just Sonic, but other characters like the Chaotix, like Amy Rose, like you know, maybe Sally in the future, like Bunny, like Tails, all those other characters. Basically it's used to give them an opportunity to shine the shine in the spotlight and have their own stories focusing on them um, but taking place within the same timeline and continuity and like I said there are a few references uh, not references but there are a few exceptions here and there because sometimes the Sonic Universe comic will be used to do stories that are elsewhere stories or elseworld stories like I said like Dark Mobius like Mobius years later, like the possible Sonic Underground story, and the All-Stars Racing Transform one-off. And of course, sometimes to do a, a, one, a one-off issue story that takes place within the same timeline and continuity. I know it sounds a little confusing, a little complicated, but that's basically what Sonic Universe is as a comic. So the Sonic Universe comic book is. For anybody that might be new to the comic and might be wondering what it is, that's what it's about. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helped you guys out. Comment below, let me know what you guys think. And that's all I'm going to say. I will talk to you all later. I am running close to out of time on this SD card of mine. And that's about it. And take care, God bless. And I will talk to you all later.